In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use dimensions. You will notice that there's an annotation panel on the Home tab of the ribbon, and there's also an Annotate tab of the ribbon. You can get to the dimension tools in either spot. To me, it's more convenient to just stay on the Home tab, so I'm going to focus on that. But if you uh, want to check out the Annotate tab, you'll also see a lot of the same tools. Now, the Annotate panel is one of the op one of the panels that has the small black arrow next to the word Annotation here. So when you click on that, it pulls down with additional options. This is where you can get to the Dimension Style Manager. Uh, and there, you'll notice, you'll notice that there is the paintbrush icon and the pull down. So the uh, pull down allows you to choose which dimension style to use, and the paintbrush icon with the dimension is the one that allows you to get to the dimension style manager. So I'm going to click on that to kind of take a look at what's set up here in my dimension style manager. Now, depending on which template was used at the start of the drawing that you're in, you might have one that's already called annotative and that may or may not be set up relatively close to an architectural style. In this case, you can see that mine is close to an architectural style meaning there's a relatively minimal amount of changes that I would need to make in order to use the dimension style. Now, if you work are working with uh, regular AutoCAD as opposed to AutoCAD architecture, uh, then you'd probably have a dimension style that looks more like this, where it's not really close to architectural style at all in the sense of the ticks and the units, etc. So I'm going to assume um, that this is the only one that I have for the purpose of showing you the settings that you would need to change. Um, if that's the case for you, then we can go through those settings. Otherwise, you can go ahead and start with the one that's closest to what you want. So if I start with standard, I'm going to double click to make that current. Then at the top, you can see it has changed to say the current dimension style is standard. And then I can modify on the right in order to get to the individual settings that we need to change. Um, there, you'll notice there are several tabs. Uh, the lines tab does have a couple settings that we need to fix, but I'm going to come back to those because some of the settings are not available until we make some other changes. So starting with symbols and arrows, uh, we can change the arrowhead type to architectural tick, and uh, that will look in more like an architectural dimension rather than the filled arrowheads. When you change the first, it automatically changes the second. I'm going to uh, change the arrowhead size. It's kind of an odd size right now by default, and I'm going to use 330 seconds for a lot of the sizes that you'll see that I go through, and part of that is for consistency sake and easy to remember. But it works out to be a pretty appropriate size anyways. 330 seconds there for the arrow size. Now moving on to the text tab. If you have set up a text style in your drawing already, you could choose that from the pull down for text style in order to set the font the way you want it. So if you needed to adjust that a little, you can click on the little uh, three dots box next to the text style pull down and then adjust your font at this point if you needed to. Now I'm going to assume that the annotative text style is going to be 330 seconds consistent, consistently and therefore enter that here in my text style manager. Uh, you can refer to the text video for more, more information about setting this up. So that automatically sets the text height for the dimension there. Now, for still on the text tab, the text alignment should be aligned with dimension line if you're doing architectural drawings that rotates the vertical dimension so that the text is parallel with the dimension line. And then the vertical placement would be above. So vertical above and then leave the center uh, centered as the choice for horizontal location. Now, moving on to the fit tab. Uh, you want to check the annotative box if you want the annotative scale button to work with the dimensions in the same way as it did with the text in the text video. And usually on the lower left, I would change this to uh, text placement, change to over dimension line width leader. And what that does is when there's a, a very tight dimension, it will position the text um, kind of above and to the side with a diagonal leader to connect back to the dimension. Primary units, you would change to architectural to get feet and inches. The precision is a little bit subjective. Um, I usually leave mine on 16th. If you put it at something that rounds off too heavily, like an inch or a half inch, it's easy to not find errors in your drafting when you do want to find them. 
And at the bottom, zero suppression, I would uncheck zero inches. So if you have a dimension like five feet, it's going to not drop the zero. It's going to say five feet, zero inches, which is what you normally want it to do. Now that we've done all that, we can go back to the lines tab and adjust a couple items here. The extend beyond ticks, I'm going to change to 330 seconds. That was not available as an option earlier. And extend beyond dim lines, I'm going to also change that to 330 seconds so that it uh, does not stick out quite as far as it did. And that should do it on the dimension settings. So I can hit OK and then again make sure that's current if it was not already. So the annotative one is basically the same, um, but you would have to check your text style and some of the other options are slightly different, um, but you can see which ones to change now. So I'm going to stay on the standard one and hit close. And now I'm ready to actually do my dimensions as soon as I set the annotation scale. So just as I reviewed in the text video, you have to set this first. And that's very important if you want your dimensions to be the right size. When you set the text height at 330 seconds, the only way that that's going to actually print at 330 seconds is if your dimensions are printed at the scale that corresponds with the annotation scale at which they were created. So you plan ahead and say, okay, I'm going to print this at, let's say, quarter scale. Then you set that, and then you create the dimensions. If you forget to do that, you can fix it later, uh, such as with the properties palette. But obviously, it's easier to do it right the first time. Now, on your annotation section, you can... Uh, Yours may look a little different if you're on AutoCAD and not AutoCAD architecture, but you would have the same basic tools and uh, you can hit the dimension um, button there or the pull down and you would have linear for a standard horizontal and vertical dimension. That would be the one that you would use 90% uh, of the time. The AEC dimensions are trying to be um, more automatic dimensions, like you can select a, a wall object or something and it would... Uh, theoretically dimension it correctly, but tends to not do it the way that I prefer, and so I usually do it more manually. But uh, again, you have the option to try that if you're using AutoCAD architecture. Um, aligned is a dimension tool that would give you dimensions that are on angle aligned with like an angled portion of a building. Again, while linear is strictly horizontal and vertical. And then uh, radius and diameter are better, good for curved areas, etc. So let me start with a linear one, and then I'll come back to talk about a couple of these again. So when you do a dimension after you select your annotation scale, you're basically um, selecting the two object snap points from which you're dimensioning, such as the outside of this little floor plan, clicking the two corner points. And the third click of the mouse drops the dimension uh, however far away from that original line you want to be. So you don't want to click right here or allow your object snaps to click on that original line because then your dimension line will be right on top of the wall line and not easy to see. At the same time, you don't want to click out here because now it's going to be so far away from the plan that it's going to be awkward to print it or to um, kind of read the drawing. So usually you um, can place it about there. It's something that looks appropriate, but it's easy to read. A lot of this ends up being kind of shifted based upon um, other things that are going to be in the drawing, and you may have conflicts, so you end up maneuvering things around a little bit later on when you get a, a very developed, busy, complicated floor plan. So again, the dimension tool is linear for a normal dimension. Click your two object snap points, and your third click drops the dimension. Now, if you have a uh, interior or smaller or partial dimensions, you typically want those to be arranged in a continuous string. So you can place your first dimension. And notice how it has that four inches going up and to the side. I'm going to come back and fix that in a minute. So if I wanted to continue that string to go, let's say, from this corner to that interior wall, I could repeat the same command, or I could use the continue tool which will continue the previously established string. And then I could select that interior wall, and then the next point, and then the next point, and that finished string is all continuous and aligned properly. So if you do that with the linear tool, you have to make sure with that third click that you're selecting the object snap of the previous dimension so that the dimensions are aligned correctly. 
now that I have done that uh, interior string, it feels like it's a little close to this outer string. So I'm going to move this one out a little bit. And you can see how um, you kind of have to play with that sum to make it look right. Now this four inch dimension, the way it's crossing over the larger dimension isn't easy to read. So this is going to be better to be over to the left side. You could position it out here like that. That would be one option. Or if you like the angled leader, you could do it like this. So you have a few options and you can see how easy it is to move that around by the grip. So any dimension has five basic grips. The two original object snap points, which control the actual number of the dimension itself. So if I took this object snap point or grip and moved it, you can see how the numbers are changing. There's two grips at the tick marks. And that controls, again, how far away from the uh, object snap points the dimension is occurring. And then you have the grip at the dimension itself or the number part. So it's easy to maneuver those if the dimension is not exactly where you want. You don't have to delete it because you can change it very easily. So that's the basics of doing some simple linear dimensions. And then again, the continue tool is very useful when you want a string uh, that is perfectly aligned. Just like when I went over text in the text video, uh, make sure in order to keep things running simply for yourself in regards to the annotative scale, that you leave the annotative annotation visibility icon on and the icon next to it automatically adds scales. Leave that one off and that will keep the annotation scale issues as simple as possible. Now, if you had forgotten to change the annotation scale and you already created your dimensions, you can select them and use the properties palette to adjust the annotation scale or you can also right click and get to the annotative scale options that way as well um, either way uh, you can get to the interface here the annotative scale um, by and then consequently add additional scales or remove scales that are inappropriate for those dimensions so you can hit add and then add an eighth inch scale and then I can remove the quarter if I don't need that and uh, so that way if I uh, yeah you get the idea now on the annotation section of the ribbon uh, like I mentioned earlier you have a lot of the same tools there including the annotation scale options that I just mentioned